it and and then what? You just complain? No one's going to care if you complain. You know who cares about you complaining? Your friends and family to an extent. Because even after a while, they're going to be like, oh, this person again with the same issue. Why, why are they always going through this? Nobody wants to hear that, man. And it's unfortunate because you do want people on your side. You want to be able to talk to people when something is bothering you. And you should. Trust me, don't let me discourage you from talking to those individuals, please. If you got somebody important in your life that you bounce ideas off of, talk to them. But just know that after a while, if you're not making any effort to deal with your anxiety. everybody it's your boy neo starling and i am back here with another podcast so today i wanted to talk about anxiety now i've touched up upon this in the past just a bit but i felt that i'd want to go into a little more detail given the nature of things and the state of the world that we're currently living in there's a lot of people going through some really bad anxiety and it often can affect people in ways that are not possible to see with the naked eye. Obviously, anxiety is an internal thing. It's something that you experience from, from within. So we often want to be a little more sympathetic and we want to try to actually get to the core of it and how you can possibly try to circumvent some of the issues that you have when you are going through anxiety. So let's uh, start off by reading about what anxiety actually is. Anxiety is an emotion characterized by an unpleasant state of inner turmoil, often accompanied by nervous behavior such as pacing back and forth, somatic complaints, and rumination. It is the subjectively unpleasant feeling of dread over anticipated events. So there's a lot to unpackage there. There really is. For example, when you want to talk about dread, right? What is dread? Dread is pretty much us being in an unhealthy mental state where we are afraid of the outcome of how something is going to turn out. We're not really sure what's going to actually happen. So we we end up putting ourselves in our own mental purgatory, per se, right? Let's say, for example, you don't know if you're going to get fired. Maybe you haven't been doing a good job lately or you've been going to work late and your boss is starting to pick up on that. Or rather, you're picking up on that even more because we're all aware of what we do, right? So... You might have some dread. You might think that when they call you into the office, that's it. This is the end of my journey. This is where it all ends. And you know what? I had a good run, but now I'm going to have to look for something else. That is a form of dread. Or rather, let's say you have a significant other, whether it be a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatever the case may be, and they start acting out of character with you. Now, suddenly, they're not sending you good morning texts anymore. They're not saying good night to you. They're being very short with you when they talk to you. Things of that nature. You can often feel a dread. You can often feel a, a change, a reversal of roles, and just people not acting the way that they normally would can cause dread, and dread will cause anxiety in turn. So things you can do to sort of circumvent that, uh, one thing I always like to practice is just breathing in general. Let's say, for example, you're not seeing a therapist. Let's say you're not taking any sort of medication for anxiety, and you're starting to really experience this for like the first time, right? If this is happening to you for the first time, Breathing is imperative. I like to do something that's called focused breathing. Just take a few minutes out of your day, you know, just experience your own breath. Just <sighs> like that alone will make you feel better. Take a deep inhalation, exhale it slowly. You got to let oxygen travel within your body and let it expand your lungs. And as you exhale that former air, you are letting new air enter your body. And with each breath of new air is a new opportunity. It's a new chance for you to get over this anxiety that is beating up at you, like just tearing apart your, your subconscious mind. Because it's really a horrible thing when you stop and think about it. It's a transference of energy, you know. When your anxiety starts to kick into high gear, it does so many different things to you, you know. And all that energy that you're taking and making it into something that's driving you insane does end up building up to this boiling point. And when it builds up to that point, you think to yourself, okay, wait a second, how am I going to get over this? This isn't something that I want to deal with. I want to be better. 
And breathing is just a small example, but you know how people will often tell you to take a second, just step back and breathe, you know, maybe practice a little meditation, go out for a run, go out for a long walk. You know, your, your physical health also dictates your mental state. And I'm a big proponent on fitness. And I always tell people this, you know, like for example, let's say you're going through heartbreak, right? Somebody broke your heart. Now your anxiety is in high gear and you can't even go to your job without thinking about this individual that, that puts you through this mental state of mind where you don't even want to do anything but be around them or just hear from them, right? I've been there. I've done that. It's not a good thing. You know, it takes over your life. You do not want to let those people rent that space inside of your head. That's real estate that should be reserved for something more important for you to actually pick yourself up from like the depths of despair and just rise to the heavens, you know? And one thing that I notice is that when you go on a walk, right? Let's say even if you're out of shape, you go on a 10 minute walk, go around a walk in, uh, around your neighborhood, you'll feel significantly better, you know, because now your body is not meant to be sedentary. So anxiety could also cause like fatigue and, you know, the ability for us to not sleep properly. We suffer from chronic insomnia. And because of that, we don't allow our bodies to get repaired to its optimal level. So when we do wake up, we end up feeling like crap. We end up feeling like things aren't going to be okay. You know, wake up in the morning, drink two glasses of water, you know, use the bathroom, take a nice shower, get your body fresh, get the stress from the day previously out of you and let new energy enter your being. Remember what I said earlier about energy? It's very true. And let me tell you something. If you're not using that energy, it's going somewhere else. And you want to avoid that. Now, mind you, these are just tips. For example, like if you're, I don't like the idea of taking pills. I've never enjoyed the the whole uh, process of you having to take a medication to alter your brain chemistry in order for you to feel a certain way. There's almost a, a zombification process when that happens. You know what I mean? Like you're not really yourself. You're, you're yourself, granted, and you might be calmer, but at what cost? What is it costing you in order to to feel calmer, you know, you're, you're literally dulling your senses and your ability to react in an optimal manner, you know, your motor functions, your, your brain functions, everything, it gets affected. And that might cause a different form of anxiety. Now, granted, I want to let you all know right now, I'm in no way, shape or form an expert. I'm not a medical professional. I am not a licensed physician or anything of that nature. You know, if you really need to see someone, see somebody. These are just my own lived experiences. And I tell you this because I've been through it. And these are kind of things that that help me. You know, they help me experience what I'm feeling and how I got over it and how I continue to get over it. Because anxiety is something that's never ending. It's going to always happen to you no matter what. You could have gotten over one hurdle and then the next day something else is going to come in your path. And what do you do? Do you meet the challenge head on or do you succumb to it? And and then what? You just complain. No one's going to care if you complain. You know who cares about you complaining? Your friends and family to an extent. Because even after a while, they're going to be like, oh, this person again with the same issue. Why, why are they always going through this? Nobody wants to hear that, man. And it's unfortunate because you do want people on your side. You want to be able to talk to people when something is bothering you. And you should. Trust me, don't let me discourage you from talking to those individuals, please. If you got somebody important in your life that you bounce ideas off of, talk to them. But just know that after a while, if you're not making any effort to deal with your anxiety or whatever issue it is that you're going through, you kind of start to stink to people, you know, because nobody wants to be around a Debbie Downer the entire time. You know, like when you're around people, you want to be around people because you want to feel good. You don't want to feel sad. You don't want to feel sad in your own head. And then in turn, making them all feel sad around you as well. You know, like, for example, I'm just doing this podcast. I project my thoughts to the world because I want to be able to spread whatever type of value that I have to give to somebody, you know, and in the process, I have helped people. I've had people email me telling me, hey, Neo, you know, you've really helped me with this. Maybe there's something you can answer for me. And I have videos um, that I can link you to as well if you want to check those out. And it feels good. You know, it feels good knowing that you're helping somebody, even if you're just helping yourself. You're you're still helping you helping yourself helps everybody else around you, because the less you put others through, the more you're helping them as well. You know, and trust me, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that there aren't times where you need to just feel your feelings. You definitely need to. I'm a proponent in that as well. I think that you should feel those those negative feelings. Sometimes you got to experience them because when you experience them, that's when you know how to deal with them. You know, you've gone through it to the point where now you can actually say, hey, 
there's something wrong here and I want to solve it. And when you identify those issues, that's where the healing process actually starts to begin. That's where you can take yourself from perdition and you can stack your tiny pebbles of truth until you've reached the heights of your dreams. And this can come across as like just motivational speaking. You know, if you want to classify this out, that's fine. I don't care as long as I get my message across and as long as I can help somebody. If I can impact your day in some way that's positive and, you know, you were able to touch other people in a positive manner because of the advice that I had given some of you, then, hey, man, that makes that makes my day. Who doesn't like to hear that they've helped? You know, we all go through anxiety, man. We're all eating. It's like Gary Vee says, we're all eating a big shit sandwich. But you know what? You decide the type of bread you want. Never forget that. You decide the type of bread your shit sandwich is going to be on. And we're all eating one every single day. You're not the only one. I'm not the only one. We're not the only ones. Okay? So drink plenty of water. Stay hydrated. You know, go outside, work out if you can. Take a walk if, if you're not in, like, proper shape to be doing, like, heavy workouts. Get yourself invested in something. Pick up a hobby. Hang out with your friends more often. You know, often when people are alone for too long, that's where your anxiety starts to build. So sometimes it's good to have other people around you. 